Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. As we kick off a new week here on Across the Fence, we welcome the Dean of University of Vermont Extension, Doug Lontine. Good afternoon. It's great to see you again. Great to be here again. Now, you recently wrapped up the fourth annual Food Systems Summit at UVM. What is the significance of this yearly summit? Well, uh, Vermont uh, has been over the last decade or two uh, developing a local food system, and uh, that has really uh, become something of importance to many other states. So Vermont uh, has been a leader, and we continue to be a leader, and so that summit is an opportunity to bring some rather large keynote speakers here uh, to speak about uh, areas of expertise that they have that we might be able to utilize here in Vermont, but also to show Vermont as a leader um, and the thought leader uh, in this arena. And so how does the Food Systems Summit benefit Vermonters? Well, um, I think it, it highlights what we're doing here. Um, we just had a press conference last week where Extension has brought in about $9 million in grants and contracts over the last 16 months. Um, those dollars are hiring people to work in the local food arena as well as other areas. So that brings, uh, it improves the economy, it helps provide jobs, uh, it supports those farmers that are producing local produce that can be processed locally locally, that can be sold locally, that can be consumed locally. So all of those things as we keep um, attention on this local um, um, uh, development of a food economy, those dollars stay in Vermont. And that's not to say we're independent from the rest of the world or the rest of the country in the food system, but if we can produce some more food here and have the benefits stay here, we don't need that extra load of carrots from California. <laughs> water is also a necessity. What is Extension's role in improving water quality in the lakes, rivers, and streams? Well, uh, we have, again, a wide range of uh, programs, both in the Connecticut River Valley as well as in the Champlain um, Lake uh, watershed. And uh, it is basically um, understanding what's going on, educating, working with a whole range of different farms, working with our water quality partners uh, to have have uh, practices put in place and understanding raised that uh, what you do both in communities and in, on farms uh, and in the forest uh, has a significant impact on the water quality uh, that we depend on for tourism and, and our own drinking water. And in many, many cases, even if you don't live near the water. Absolutely, because our drinking water gets piped uh, depending where you are. We may have our own well, but um, a, a good uh, groundwater is critically important. Exactly. Well, earlier this month, Extension announced that the Pike family of Stowe is the winner of the 2015 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award. The selection committee called the Pike great stewards of the land and highlighted the family's implementation of farming practices that meet or exceed environmental regulations. The Pikes were also lauded for adapting to new technologies such as robotic milkers. We thought about robotic milking for 10 or 12 years before we finally decided to actually go into that. At that point, it was a near necessity if we were going to stay in business and we didn't really want to get back into hired labor. So this robotic thing looked very good and, and the, you know, we've looked at them for 12 years, but in the last five or six years, they've improved to the point where now there's a payback to robotics. If, if you figure the numbers right, they, they can pay off in five to seven years. So at that point, we pulled the trigger on that, and uh, we're still learning how to, how to use them, but uh, it's been a good move, I think. It's a lot less physically challenging, certainly no less mentally challenging, but a lot less physically challenging work to let the robot do the milking of the cows. It's a beautiful thing for cows, even more than people, because cows are just free to do what they want to do, whatever. It's a fabulous way to make your cows even calmer than they were before. This farm stood out with the judging committee this year, mostly because of the way they chose to find a farming style that fit the way they wanted to live. Instead of getting big, moving forward, and always being in a growth mode, they chose a breed of cows that fit the way they manage. They chose a breed of cows that fit the barn style that they have and they chose robotic milking so that they wouldn't have to hire in outside labor and they could keep things as a, a reasonably manageable family unit farm. I think the best example that this farm sets is for those other farms who are in the 50, 70, 80, maybe 100 cow range. 
to take a look at this and say, you know what, I can do this without having to grow or get out. I can farm like this. I can utilize today's technology on such a small scale that I can manage this farm the way I want to manage it and still stay in. Our congratulations once again to the Pike family for the Farm of the Year honor. Well now for small farms in particular, the state is working on new environmental regulations. And Doug, do you have a sense of um, what small farmers, um, not just dairy farmers, will need to do in the future? Yeah, absolutely. But before I answer that, I also want to give my congratulations to the Pike family uh, for being selected. Uh, great, uh, great uh, farm. Um, small farms uh, are going to be covered under the new water quality bill that was passed uh, this past the legislative session. The rules are still being written, so we don't know the specifics. But we, in extension, we know we're already advising farms. Uh, and a farm, uh, the definition can be down to just two or three animals or a patch in the back um, where maybe there are too many animals even for that small patch uh, and so you have mud running down hill to a stream or you've got your manure pile that you never thought about that it rains and it runs into the stream uh, or you've got soil erosion off that small field and so it's really enhancing the thoughtfulness of everyone who handles animals and land about how they're impacting the streams and water bodies around them and so we're going to help in that arena. And how is extension going to help the farmers? Well uh, primarily education once we know exactly what the rules are so right now it's just making everyone aware that <laughs> it's coming uh, then once we know what the rules are there'll be workshops there'll be fact sheets there'll be webinars um, there'll be consultations there'll be a whole range of educational uh, approaches and we'll also be working cooperatively with our water quality partners which is the Natural Resources Conservation Service and and uh, regional water quality associations or, or local water quality associations. So it really, um, we know there'll be education because that's what we do, right. exactly what that's going to consist of, we don't know at the moment. Alrighty. Well, one of the services that UVM Extension offers Vermont residents is science-based information about home horticulture. Whether you have a question about runoff or about an unwanted pest, the Extension Master Gardener Helpline is ready to help. Keith Silva tells us how. <laughs> If you've got a question about your garden, Carl Dorner is your man. Vermont Master Gardener Helpline. Dorner volunteers at the University of Vermont Extension Master Gardener Call Center. Do you have a lot of these plants? Do they all look the same? I enjoy talking to people, number one. Uh, I believe in the, in the mission of Extension, um, and that's probably my primary reason. That that's, I think it's important to provide access uh, to scientific, to, to science-based research in the solution of horticulture and agricultural problems and to extend that information to homeowners, not just to commercial growers. And that's what we do here. So I find it very rewarding. I like being able to set people's mind at rest. Uh, people invest a lot of themselves into their gardens and their home landscapes. And when they have a problem, it's a problem. If you have any further questions, please feel free to give us a call. Volunteers at the Helpline take about 2,000 calls a year since the Vermont Master Gardener program started in 1991, the helpline has received 42,000 calls. Heather Carrington is the program's coordinator. The UVM Extension Master Gardener Helpline is a resource for all Vermonters to get answers to their home gardening questions. It's staffed entirely by volunteers who have been trained in the Extension Master Gardener course. So they've had 45 hours of training from UVM Extension faculty on all aspects of sustainable home horticulture. There aren't that many resources that are available for the home gardener. There are plenty of resources available for commercial gardeners. But what this does is it gives all Vermont access to the research-based information being developed at the University of Vermont. The helpline aligns with UVM's obligation as a land-grant university. It's one of the missions of Extension, actually, as a land-grant university to share the science-based information research that's being developed there. So we really do keep it exactly to that. In fact, actually, our volunteers are prohibited from giving that sort of folksy home remedies um, answer to questions. So they actually have to use research and science-based information, and that's what they've been trained in in the first place as Extension Master Gardeners. When they're doing research on it, they'll only refer to .edu, which would be university-based websites, or .gov websites. So they're, they're not going to be looking into folk remedies. Rob Lee Smith became a Master Gardener this year. For her, volunteering at the helpline provides an experience as distinct 
as Vermont itself. Plants are so vital to our life. I mean, it's not simply food and shelter and clothing, but the oxygen we breathe, is, it is the biology of life, and so that's terribly important. You know, it's so nice to be able to specialize in Vermont's gardening, because that is unique, and you can't gain that knowledge anywhere else. Thanks to the internet, there are more resources and more information. But all those pages and websites can't replace talking with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I think people want the interaction. This phone, this interactive resource, I think is, is more valuable to people than just uh, browsing the internet for information. And that's what I want. I want to be able to tell someone what's going on, to hear what, you know, get feedback from them. So maybe I'm not thinking about the most important thing. I think the interactive nature of our work is, is what people are looking for, and it's what I would, what I look for when I call. The UVM Extension Master Gardener Helpline, a resource for answers to your gardening questions. Pick up the phone and give them a call. In South Burlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. The Master Gardener Helpline is available statewide by calling toll-free 1-800-639-2230. That's 800-639-2230. And I think one of the most amazing things is they get 2,000 calls a year. Yes, and that, that year is really packed in the spring, summer, and fall. Right. So a <laughs> shout out to all our volunteers that go through the training and and, and work with our Vermonters every day. Fantastic. We're going to take a look at another extension program that helps protect Vermont's environment. Extension's 4-H uh, program offers the Try for the Environment program. At the Stowe Elementary School, students in the program sorted through the trash for a good reason. We collected, I think, about 80 pounds of trash. And the kids then, we went to work and sorted them, and we sorted them by wings in the, in the building. Um, and then the kids sorted the trash by what can be recycled, what's compostable, and what are we going to end up with just trash. We found out that it was somewhere around 40% of our total trash was actually recyclable or compostable and could be diverted elsewhere. I had the students look at all of the items that we were collecting and really take note of what were we finding the most of in our trash. Um, and milk cartons was by far and away the most. We phased out milk cartons and started solely with the milk machine all within this one week of time and we were going from filling up four to five 50 gallon trash bags with just milk cartons over the course of five school lunches to now we have a five gallon bucket of trash. And there were obviously no milk cartons in there. Sadly, it's more expensive to do the right thing and to get rid of these things properly. Um, but we did find that in doing this, we're greatly reducing our trash. We went down from three pickups a week to now we're getting picked up twice a month for our trash. So it's, it's a significant savings. I think we actually made it fun because sorting trash and compost and recycling is fun. And going up to a milk dispenser and getting milk is fun, even if they're not really realizing because it's just fun. I think it's just really going to help the state learn about trash and that it does affect people. You start to find areas and topics within the environment that you can structure a program that won't take three or five years to see results. You really have to have something where the actions of the students will be able to see results within the time frame of a school year. That's what I call hands-on. That's absolutely hands-on. Um, sorting your trash to, to learn exactly what you keep and what you throw away and what can be composted and um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great hands-on learning experience. It's what 4-H is all about. And Try for the Environment is not just an environmental program, it's also a teen leadership program. Absolutely, just using the environment as a way to teach youth at all ages uh, some of the leadership um, potential that they have. Well, we're just about out of time, but if you have a question or a comment for the Dean of Extension, he'd appreciate hearing from you. You can reach Doug at the State Extension Office. The toll-free number there is 1-866-622-2990. Again, that's 866-622-2990. You can also reach Doug by email. His email address is on your screen. It's doug.lontine at uvm.edu. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Judy. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.